column privileges. Let's recap a little. System privileges. System privileges allow a user to do things with database objects such as create tables, change tables, etc. Object privileges allow the allocation of access to tables between users. In other words, allow an application user to access, for instance, one of the concerts tables. Column privileges go a little bit further than object privileges in that they allow the specification of access on tables to specific columns within a table. Views can be used to do more or less the same thing that object privileges and column privileges can be used. Not quite in the same way. A view can be used to pick out certain columns within the table and then that view can be used by the same user or it access can be granted to a different user. So a view would be more or less a combination of object and column privileges. This is one use for views. Views are used for a lot more things than just privilege allocation. Additionally, it's not recommended to use views to allow access of privileges between users. There are other ways to deal with allocating privileges between users. The best and most simple way is to use object privileges, column privileges, and synonyms, and perhaps even granting access to the objects themselves without the use of synonyms. The virtual private database. The virtual private database was a term introduced in Oracle 8i. The virtual private database was an internal set of rules that could be set, why I say internal, they, could, they can be set internally in the database to allow specific access to different groups and allow access on specific tables and parts of tables, etc. The, the idea of the virtual private database was that it was automated internally and you don't have to do too much with it. So you wouldn't have to set up object, column, privileges, views, all over the database for all sorts of users. Generally, the virtual private database can make object and column privileges a lot more simple to manage. Let's get on to groupings. There are different types of groupings. The first one is a role. Another type of grouping is it's called a public group. What's a role? A role is an object in the database where you can allocate privileges on objects, etc., to that role. What you can then do is you can then assign that role as a group of privileges to a user. That's the idea. All it's doing is grouping privileges into what could be named groups or named roles, and then you can allocate, for instance, a role called developers to all the developers, a role called application end users to application end users, another role called DBA, of which there is one in the database automatically. There is a DBA role, which would be allocated to DBAs. You can go into a multitude of different levels. The public user group. The public user group is a user group where you can assign a privilege to a table and you can allocate it to everyone, regardless of who they are. Allocating database objects to the public user group is not secure. For obvious reasons, anyone can access that object. You have no control over allocating specific access to specific users. It is advisable to use the public user group cautiously. Some useful DBA tips. Special roles. There are a large number of special roles included generally when Oracle is installed. The obvious one is the DBA role, which is a database administration role. It gives you more or less access to everything. Another interesting role is the select catalog role, which can be granted to a user, allowing that user access to all the Oracle metadata views. It is possible in Oracle to share resources using profiling. Resources such as CPU time and memory, where percentages of those resources are allocated to specific profiles, and then those profiles can be allocated to users. There are a number of metadata views which are useful to interrogate privileges, namely role privileges, system privileges, and tab privileges.